Welcome back, everyone, to Natalie's Don Air Man, your host, Dominic, and we have a 3v3 on small screen battlefield. Ignore the bottom for right now. We get that fixed in a second. All right, there we go. So yeah, small screen battlefield, 3v3, and you know what? The frame rate should be fine, because that's why we don't have the the thing with the factories in the corner. That turns out to be actually really slow. So if you watched the 3v3 tournament about two or three weeks ago, you'll know you'll notice that the frame rate was terrible. Very quickly. It was like 10-15 frames a second. It was absolutely atrocious. Yeah, that factory panel is not very efficient. Also, it turns out that the metal extractors showing their text is surprisingly also way less efficient than the bars, which annoys me. I think there's an issue with the way that the GL text function in the in the engine is handled. I'm not, I have to double check. I haven't done, done any real analytics or performance stuff on it, so I don't know. It's just that's the only clear difference between the two code paths. So, yeah. Also, I turned off a couple other widgets, like the X-ray shader, so... I'm not sure if that makes it harder to see. Like, the fact that you aren't seeing the outlines and all the units as I zoom out. Which... Yeah, I kind of wish the team colors are more obvious in the units, to be honest. Just as part of the standard texturing. That helps a bit, too. And I toned down graphic settings very slightly. Not enough to be noticeable, just enough that... I'm pretty sure it's a bit less work. That gained me another 5 frames per second. Anyway, let's get to the actual game. Stop talking shop. So, we have Team Lustful, which is Wes... Wes27 on air? Astrin on... Oops. Yeah, Astrin on the shields up front, and Lustful themselves on Amphbots over on the western side of the map, making use of the oceans. Over on the north side, though, we have Average Plan. Well, Team Average Plan. Made up by Average Plan on the hovercrafts. More shoe on air and gunships for Mob Mob. Okay, so we got double air. Interesting choice. I mean, Mob Mob in the back with the gunship makes a lot of sense. The air over here is a bit of a risky strategy. I mean, their opponents aren't going for any sea strat or sea based or amph based or hover based strategies over on the eastern side of the map, so it's not really that threatened. But it still could have been a problem. However, we have the hovercraft here up front. That's doing its job. I mean, it's going to be able to defend pretty well over to the center and. I actually can have a hard time defending over the east. Or the west, rather. Might be okay. Could be a little tricky. We'll see what happens. I mean, daggers do hit underwater, but that's a lot of ducks, and I'm pretty, fairly certain those daggers will die. Though I'm also fairly certain there's enough of them. I mean, that's what? Yeah. 100 damage each. So that's 1,100 damage in total. Well, two volleys will get rid of the ducks. Assuming that they hit all the ducks in, in order. And the ducks are nice and bunched up, so these daggers will have a field day. They go for it, and the halberd as well should be used primarily for getting rid of this felon. That's clearly what the point is. And there's the daggers. There's the ducks. The daggers definitely winning that exchange. I mean, the ducks underwater actually think will have a slightly easier time with this, because they can just kite with the torpedoes. But they aren't going to be able to manage. Losing two daggers in the process of wiping out that entire force of ducks. That looks to be giving Team Lustful a bit more... Or, sorry, average plan... A bit more of a confidence boost. Not quite going for it, though. Looks like... No, it's just use those daggers. Stop Ash's Commander from actually doing anything useful. Already stopped the Felon from doing anything useful. Ash's Commander should be heavily threatened. Probably won't be going down. I think the main focus here is obviously get rid of the Lotuses. Get... Break some of the frontline defenses. Are there any forces coming in from behind? It looks like the answer is no. There is, however, a Missile Silo coming up pretty soon. So we have that taken care of. And at the same time, over Team Lustful... Chainsaw's already being built up to help deal with whatever is thrown at them by Morshu. Nothing really done in the north. Oh, actually, never mind. Lustful going for what looks like a setup for Sea Striders. Probably set up a reef or something fairly early. Well, sorry, I should say Shogun. Oh, no, no, reefs. Reefs more likely. Reef is Kyla, actually, considering the cost. Granted, at this point, Team Lustful does have 50 metal per second, so they can kind of go with... They could go with the Shogun if they wanted to. And I could see the logic. I mean... That's a bit more of a surface ship, ship more of an artillery ship. We'd be able to help deal with the back lines. And definitely would be help be able to deal with all of this stuff here. I mean, the reef, though... I don't know. I'm curious what Lustle's going to go for. I'd love to see a reef. Drones are a neat element of the game, and I don't feel like we see them enough. But we'll have to come back to that once it actually starts being built. At the same time, though... We do have that metal extractor almost done. Another... Oh, never mind. Geo, geo generator being set up for average plan, which they do need. They are a little bit low on energy. I'll grant that. Same time, though, center of the map. 
is, again, Halberds coming in, wasting all of the shields. I mean, average plan is on point with that. Get rid of the shields. Make sure the Lotus can't do anything. Send in the daggers to wipe out the Lotus. I mean, Astrin basically a walking Lotus themselves, but that's not even going to solve much. And the key problem, of course, being the Thugs, and the Thugs, of course, being tearing, torn apart by the Halberds. Halberds will be going down here. Should we be able to get rid of maybe one of the Ducks? Probably get rid of the Sorry, Ducks. The Thugs. And get rid of the Felon for sure. Halberds now are back on hold fire. Just wanted to get rid of that Felon. And I totally approve. Still, though, Astrin has managed to hold a fairly large chunk of that center. Now, the center Isthmus is not clearly average plans. Average plans is doing a good job of trying to slow down Astrin's approach. But Astrin's gradually getting there. And how much reclaim is in here? 1,200 metal worth of reclaim. Yeah, average plan is going to be doing fine. At the same time, there is a Skyla being built up. Or Skyla. I'm not as... Wor I'm not as up-to-date on my Greek myths as I really should be. I'm pretty sure it's Skyla. I mean, if Charybdis is pronounced Charybdis, then Skyla is probably pronounced Skyla. Or Skillet. It's Skillet. Fries units with nukes. Actually, what is the build time of the nukes? 30 seconds to... Whoa! Oh, that's Tac Nuke, though. That's Aos. Okay. Speaking of which, Morishu does have their missile silo up. Doesn't have anything built with it, however. So, I'm curious how that's going to work out. Oh, FFC? Where are all the storages? Underwater. Right here! Ah, Team Lussell's got that. I'm not sure where Average Plan is actually saying. Is Average Plan setting up storages? I think they might actually be playing this properly. Although, to be fair, to be fair Team Lussell's doing fine. Team Lussell's doing really well, but... There's the storages. Okay. So, FFC... To answer your question, there are the storages. Okay. That, though, team average plan. Oh, this is interesting. Conch coming in here, nothing really stopping it. It's setting up a bunch of radar, setting up a bunch of urchins. Wait, is that radar? Oh, of course. I never thought of doing that. I mean, it makes sense, just for some reason it never occurred to me. It's like, if you need something built underwater that can't be built on water... Terraform it up! What is the thing building now? I want to know what this thing is up to. What are you up to? You're up to Radar Tower. Wait, I thought Radar Tower could be built in... Yeah, Radar Tower can be built in water. I guess they just want to avoid getting hit by any amphib units. That's clever. It makes more sense when you're dealing with a 3v3 when you have the economy to pull that off without draining too much than compared to a 1v1. But that's a really clever thing. I've got to keep that in mind. I don't know why it didn't occur to me. But hey, good ideas. Not going to complain. Anyway, back over at Average Plan. They do have the Trinity on its way. Slowly but surely. Clearly not the main plan, though. It's not the focus. Getting the Overdrive grid up, however, is the focus. Making sure to get all the Geo Plants set up. Definitely the focus. And over here... Oh, Lance set up to help deal with the Felons. And the... And the Aspices. Oof. Send those halberds up, please. What What do you guys see? Please tell me you see... No, not you. Gah. What do you see? Well, you see it now. But the Lance already did his job. I'm thinking, I kind of want to see the halberds go in there, drain the... Drain everything. Drain all the shields, and then the Lance does his job, wipes out everything. Same time, though. Oof. Raptor coming in here, getting rid of all these wasps, making it that much harder for the coastal construction to be completed. And by that much harder, I mean basically impossible. That's reducing a lot of potential overdrive for Team Average Plan. Oops. For Team Average Plan. I mean, they could deal with this fairly effectively with just you know, one or two more units, but no. And the thing is that that Trinity has been spotted. The more important thing here, this information. We should see anti-nukes being built up within the next half hour or so. Okay, the game doesn't last that long. But we should be seeing anti-nukes built up fairly quickly just because it's clear there is a nuke. And Skilla is just about finished, too. So, speaking of nukes, nukes are on the way. Same way about this missile silo has not been used at all. Which is kind of surprising. Actually, for that matter, there's no razors or anything else to try to help deal with this raptor. Just the commander's pea shooter. Not what I'd call the best anti-air force, but, I mean, it can work. Ooh. Just managed to catch the Astron's commander going a little bit too far afield, getting wiped out by a lance. I think I might have given some confidence to Team Average Plan, although admittedly, Lance being a little bit unsafe, not quite the trigger discipline that I would expect, but okay, that's... It's a dead teammate. Another Lance... That, that for, second Lance must have cheated on the first Lance's wife or something, because that... Okay, that's a bad joke. But seriously, 
Bad trigger discipline, second lance. That was a perfectly good lance. On the other hand, Skyla is coming in here, does have a couple nukes coming, set up. So this, this setup here, all the lances, their days are kind of numbered, to be quite honest. Same time, a bunch of daggers going over here to help deal with everything that's been built up. I mean, the radar tower was clever, but there are hovercrafts, so it's not really going to help too much. And at the same time, this Skyla should be torn apart by the daggers as soon as they get the chance. And over north side of the map, Raptor's coming in, finally being dealt with by the Tridents. Same time, Trinity is on its way. I really don't understand what the missile silo here is for, but there's... That missile silo is not doing its job, but the Skyla certainly is, or Skilla rather, certainly is, getting... Oof! Nice shot! Getting rid of that... Getting rid of the Moho plant, that's all it needs. Average plant's entire base is wiped out as a result. That might be able to break things open for Team Lustful. However, average plan, now that we've seen the skill of going after it. Get those daggers on that thing. I mean, it should be able to survive. No, it's not going to survive long. 3,000 HP. These daggers are going to wipe it completely clean. But hey, it did its job. Got rid of the Moho Geo plant. Got rid of average plan's entire front line. Oh, on the other hand, Lustful. Now, they got the Stardust. They should be okay. They might lose their command in the process. No. No, it's not enough volleys. 1,300 HP. You need all well, 13 daggers. And that's not what they have. At the same time, you do see... You see Astrin going forward. They're going for it. They should be able to take this out, too. Average plant's probably going to be losing much, losing most of what they have left, really. One lance is ready. I mean, given the trigger just been all these lances, I wouldn't be surprised if Average plant loses their commander as a result of this lance actually doing its job. But I... I'm not the most confident. Oof. And that lance doesn't even manage to get through the shields, either. Reduces how much damage the felon ends up doing, but it's not enough. Average plan just digging themselves in a hole. Doesn't even want to deal with it. Just going in the water, going for a swim. Same time, Mom up getting a singularity reactor, which I'm I'm not entirely against. Considering that Team Lustful has lost a lot of territory. Sorry, average plan's lost a lot of territory. They could use that just to increase their overall power off overdrive. And holy crap, yeah, that's Okay, an extra 20 metal per second off of that. Nice to see. Kind of necessary considering the circumstances, though at the same time, this Trinity is not doing anything. Astrin has basically nothing to go with. This entire force is completely unopposed. Well, at the same time, I mean, Average Plan could deal with this. I mean, this... These caretakers are in range. Just start building up anything. <laughs> Average Plan, make units? Maybe? That's, I don't know, it's a start. I mean, Mump has got a great position to make units from. But, no, that is going to be... Whoa, what the heck? Did... Did... Okay, I... No, that's a self-D. That's... Slow burn self-destruction. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Everyone on Team Average Plan has just decided to throw in the towel, even though they had an economic advantage, and really, if Mope Mob had just built up, like, a bunch of harpies, or not even harpies, like, a bunch of black thorns, or revenants, rather, a bunch of revenants, they would have wiped out this entire force. Like, I don't really know why they threw in the towel. But, yeah, average plan, I think their their analysis is right. Their team just couldn't be bothered. That Trinity was being built almost the entire game. Didn't manage to do anything. Well, anyway, that is... That is clearly that. I did not expect that to be a self-D situation. At this point, Mop Mop's the only one still actually with anything. Hmm. Yeah, it's gotta suck. Oh well. I mean, that's one of the downsides of just random 3v3. Sometimes you get the situation where the player is just throwing the towel. Just self-D everything and that's it. But yeah, again, like, with that much economy, you could have had like three or four revenants in the time that it took for that shield ball to get to the gunship plant. And that would have been enough to wipe them out. So I don't really know what the logic was there, because that was a really good position to be in. I mean, the skill is there, and the skill will be able to help take care of all these caretakers, and that's going to be it. That and this owl. This owl is the last thing. I mean, bit of a joke. The owl will get killed at some point, sooner or later. Is that skill just going to try to hit the owl? No. Get that last metal extractor first. 
Okay, that's... That should be game. Yep. Hits the ground and that's the game over. Metal used was... Actually quite even though. That's what I mean. Team Lustful had a massive advantage in metal used. And army value was... Sorry, team average plan. I'm saying team muscles on the bottom side. Team muscle had a slight advantage economically. Team average plan was very close though, and army value team average plan was also quite close the whole time. I mean, a little inefficient, but mostly because of the self destruction. If that self destruction didn't happen, we wouldn't see this giant spike in value lost. That was, that wasn't killed. Like team muscle didn't really kill that. It just blew up. But okay. Oh, yeah, Team Average Plane did have a lot of excess. 8,000 metal excess. Considering that it was just a matter of building more units. But I think... Mop Mop... Well, more shoes clearly kind of new. Mop Mop's sort of new. But in either case, I don't think new enough that's a big deal. Like, just build more units. That's... They had the money. They had plenty of available income to spend that money on units. And like I said, it would have been easy to stop what had been coming in. But I can kind of understand, like, thinking, oh yeah, Black Dawn. Like, oh crap, there's a bunch of units. What do I need that's expen that I can afford? Get rid of a bunch of units at once. I've got gunships. Revenant. Revenant's the first one that comes to mind. Probably not the best one. Though probably not a bad one. I mean, that's... Yeah, for the money, I guess you could have also gotten a lot of harpies. But to me, the felons would have taken them out. But yeah, the frame rate was great! Well, there was a couple... Tarps, where I think it dipped below 30 in a couple of locations, but that's like a couple times when it got super heavy It might have dipped below 30 as opposed to as soon as people start building units. It stays below 15 permanently So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I'm glad I managed to figure out a way of making the game run well Oh wait, Sp Steel Blue, which widget are you talking about? Are you talking about the the factory panel widget that I was using before until recently? Hmm. I mean, yeah, that widget... Honestly, even if it worked well, despite the fact that it's not there, you can't really see what people are building, like what their unit compositions are going to be, I... I don't know. I feel like it was kind of distracting. I feel like it was just a lot of stuff getting in the way. It wasn't... It was more cluttered than anything else. It, this just feels a lot easier to work with, at least as a caster. Yeah, I don't get to see, okay, this is their, they're building up a bunch of, like, this is their entire composition. Like, oh yeah, they're going to be building up some minotaurs in a couple minutes. But, so what? Like, I can just, if I really want to know, I can click on the factory. And, okay, maybe for the viewers is a problem, and I'm sorry, if you really like it, I can understand, but it is a really slow widget. But yeah, that, that widget is... It's okay in 1v1, it's still slower than it could otherwise be, but in 3v3, it's atrocious. Like, I went from, like, when I was checking one of the replays from the tournament, it went from 15 FPS, or 10 to 15 FPS, up to about 45 FPS as soon as I turned off that widget. That's how massive of a change it was. And this is five minutes into a 3v3 game on Center Rock. So yeah, that was a huge difference. And yeah, thank you, Sprang. That's Sprang, that's exactly what I'm thinking. The team factory, or the factory panel is largely noise and clutter. It might be handy sometimes if you're wondering, okay, what were they building? But there's so many other things to focus on. And to me, what's going on in front of the map, like what's going on in front of the screen on the map, the direct thing here, most of the screen, like what most of the screen real estate is, I mean, it's hard to tell because this thing's here, but when you don't have the score panel, most of the screen real estate should be dedicated to the screen, to the map itself, because there's everything going on on the map. Like, where people are, where units are, where economy is, what territory's been taken. That stuff's more important. The unit composition is important, but what's important is the units that are actually in play. Like, okay, seeing that maybe in response to something, someone's made units that deal with it. Sure, in 1v1, that actually kind of makes a lot of sense, but in the 3v3, there's so many units being built, so many different compositions being built up all at once, that to me it's much more important just to focus on what's actually on the map, what's actually in play. Because that's what's actually going to be doing anything. Anyway, that is that. So again, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of showing off the fact that my computer is actually capable of casting 3v3 games without issue, or with little issue. I think the FPS is like 
No, it's 60. Well, 60 to 40. How does it feel choppy? Yeah. Like, worst case scenario, it's like 40-something. Usually it's close to 60, so, yeah. Works fine. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a good everyone. Oh, yeah, I also... I also reduced or changed the screen scaling so that the widgets are smaller because I wanted to increase the amount of space available. Something I thought of doing after seeing Dimethorne stream because I think Dimethorne's done that as well and it looks really good. So again, just adding more screen real estate to the center. And no, I've got stuff as usual. I, te I tend to go out to visit friends on Saturdays. So I won't be playing games right now. I might do some of that tomorrow since I've actually gotten a way of approaching games that is actually fun, even if I'm not doing well. Like, a way of approaching games that doesn't deal with wins and losses, but thinks in terms of going forward. Oh, hey, Dimefront does have a 4K monitor! I wasn't sure! Thank you, Steel Blue. I thought Dimefront might have had a 4K monitor and that's why things are so big, but I just thought, you know what? I have... There's... I mean, there's the scale option right here. Say, graphics... Game interface scale. I played around with that and I found 85% was a really good value. I could still see everything just fine, but I felt like I have so much more space, which is great. But yeah, so, friends. No, not girlfriends. I don't have a girlfriend. I have female friends, but not any girlfriends. Pro tip for anyone trying to go into acting at all, at least in Vancouver, there's a bit of a rule, somewhat unspoken, but sometimes spoken, that you don't date other actors. And since most of my female friends are fellow acting students, it's not likely I'm going to be going out with any of them. So, yeah. Pro tip for any aspiring actors out there, I realize actors get married to other actors sometimes, but that's not generally the approach taken as a rule or that's recommended. Anyway, bye! Have a good night!